Believe me, if I started murdering people, there'd be none of you left. My children are coming. I told you 20 years ago. I told the judge, can't you see what you're doing here? He didn't care. Nobody cared. Only a handful of children cared. They cared enough to give their all. And what are you accused of? Well, do you mean what am I convicted of or what am I accused of? I'm accused what? of a lot more than I'm convicted of. Mm. I know what, first, what are you accused of? Well, I was accused of originally, originally accused of killing 34 women, but nobody has ever managed to come up with 34 names, jurisdictions, or anything else. It's a false accusation. And what is your conviction? I was convicted of killing two in Fort Pierce. I was never shown to be at the crime scene. There was never any link between me and the people that were killed, except the testimony of the mother of one of them. Everything, you, everything, well, I shouldn't say everything, much of what you see on television shows man as a negative creature where there's so many good things about man that could be on television, but they're not quite as interesting as the bad things. And I'd like to do something with my life, you know, that exemplifies the good as opposed to the bad. And I had hoped that killer fiction would have a good, would be something that would be good and it's kind of a mixed bag, actually. Some people say, yeah, it's really good. And then others say, it's really disgusting. And I say, yeah, you're right, it is. It's really disgusting. Does it make you want to hate murder? Or does it make you want to do murder? Because if it makes you want to hate murder, then it's, then it's working. Are you a little more cautious about picking up that hitchhiker? <laughs> You girls, are you a little more cautious about who you pick up in the singles bar and take home? Like Mr. Goodbar, right? Diane Keaton did that very well, but... Does it... Do you get my drift, what I was trying to inject an awareness into people through that? They see the deliberate stranger and they see it as entertainment. But Ted was real. He was real, man. He'd kill you and laugh. He enjoyed it. And I could sit there, like when I'm sitting with you and talk about it. He relished it. It's clear that you were guilty of murder, and yet he says in all his conversations with you, he never heard you express remorse. Have you never felt it? Remorse for what? You people have done everything in the world to me. Doesn't that give me equal right? I can do anything I want to you people at any time I want to, because that's what you've done to me. If you spit in my face and smack me in the mouth and throw me in solitary confinement for nothing, what do you think's going to happen when I get out of here? What do you think's going to happen to you? The things that you create in here. There's no need to feel guilty. I haven't done anything I'm ashamed of. Maybe I haven't done enough. I might be ashamed of that for not doing enough, for not giving enough, for not being more perceptive, for not being aware enough, for not understanding, 
for uh, being stupid. Maybe I should have killed four or five hundred people, then I would have felt better. Then when I felt like I really offered society something. Have you never felt remorse for the crimes you committed? What crimes? I told you I haven't committed any crimes. I don't break laws. There's no need to break a law. Why should I break the law? I'm in God's will. Do you feel guilty? Do you feel guilty for the thousands and millions of Indians that you destroyed? Do you feel guilty for the gas chambers where you've killed the Jews? Do you feel guilty for timeless, endless, how far can you go back and say guilty of what? Guilty of what? There's no need to be guilty. Then you're going to make me suffer until I say, okay, now I feel guilty. And then you feel secure now that I feel guilty? Was that going to make you feel better if I feel guilty? Uh, guilty. Hmm. I wouldn't do anything that I felt guilty about. You know, if I wanted to kill somebody, I'd take this book and beat you to death with it. And I wouldn't feel a thing. It'd be just like walking to the drugstore. But yet you want to come and say, do you feel blame? Are you mad? Uh, do you feel like Bruce Bob Ruffinich? Get Frenich? Bruce 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 Ruffinich? Get 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 I don't understand you either, but I don't spend my whole life trying to put the blame over on you because my cigarette didn't light or because something didn't work right. What do you want to call me a murderer for? I've never killed anyone. I don't need to kill anyone. I think it. I have it here. I don't need to live in this physical realm. I walk around in the physical realm and I put on the faces and I talk and I play and hang yeah, it's this big act, man. In the spiritual world is where I live. I exist in places you never even dreamed of. Believe me, if I started murdering people, there'd be none of you left. My children are coming. I told you 20 years ago. I told the judge, can't you see what you're doing here? He didn't care. Nobody cared. Only a handful of children cared. They cared enough to give their all. One of the, the final uh, murders that you committed, of course, uh, was apparently little Kimberly Leach, 12 years of age. Uh, I think the, the public outcry is greater there because an innocent child was taken from a, from a playground. What did you feel after that? What was there? Were there the normal emotions three days later? Where were you, Ted? I... I can't really talk about that right now. That's weird. That's too painful. Yeah. I would like to, uh, I'd like to be able to convey to you what that that uh, that experience is like, but I can't. That I won't okay. be able to talk about that. Okay. I can't begin to understand. Well, I can try, but I'm, I'm aware that I can't begin to understand the pain that the parents of these, of these children that I have, and these young women that I have harmed feel. And I can't restore really much to them, if anything. I won't pretend to, and I don't even expect them to forgive me, and I'm not asking for it. That, that kind of forgiveness is of God, and if they have it, they have it. If they don't, well, maybe they'll find it someday. Do you deserve the punishment the state has inflicted upon you? <laughs> That's a very good question. And I'll answer it very, very honestly. I, I don't want to die. I'm not going to kid you. I'll kid you not. Um, 
I deserve certainly the, the most extreme punishment society has, and I deserve, I think society deserves to be protected from me and from others like me, that's for sure. Um, but I'll tell you, there are lots of other kids playing in streets around this country today who, who are going to be dead tomorrow and the next day and the next day and next month because other young people are reading the kinds of things and seeing the kinds of things that are available in the media today.